All right, so this is a tutorial on how to do a basic sound cube for Tabletop Simulator. So basically what you want to do is I've already created a basic little cube in Blender with a basic texture for it. That's something that's you can probably do on your own or you can use any model you want. But what you want to do now is open up Unity. So we'll go right from the beginning, go right to Unity and I want to download Unity, the Mod Master package, the stuff that uh, that Berserker Games tells you how to do. So you should see this because you have to be able to work within their within their uh, version of it. Otherwise, Unity this won't work. You have to be in their their version of it. Otherwise, you can't build the asset bundles. Anyways, we'll let this get fired up. All right. So now I go to assets. So you can see in your scene right now that you got nothing there. So I have my sound cube, which is just a cube I made and beveled off the edges. I can just drag that into the scene. And my texture, I just drag that until you see a little up arrow thing, which means your texture goes on. So it's just a basic little cube with an audio symbol on it. Nothing fancy, but something to work with. So if you find that you're, I'm using the scroll wheel in and out and right mouse button to and holding that to look around and you can hold the middle mouse down to move up and down but if you find you're like out in weird land you can click your object here and just hold your cursor over the scene and press F and that will focus it right back onto it okay so what do we have so far we have a cube with a texture and we can look over here on our hierarchy and we can see that if we click on default that will show us our what basically what the cube is and the um, uh, texture here. Okay, so that's the beginning part. So the next thing you're gonna need is sound clips. So now you're gonna go down here and you're going to right click and you're going to import new assets. So you have to click on that. You have to navigate through your computer to where you wanna go. So I'll just go on my stuff and let's go Genesis Music. So I got all kinds of different um, sound bites and clips, all wave files. I just prefer to save them as a wave file. But you can do whatever you want. So let's see. I want to. Then we got the Witcher. So I can click that and import it. So now it's going to drag it into here. Of course, the files get bigger as you go. You can see this was a two-minute stereo clip of music so I'm going to bring in another one so let's import another asset should take you back to your folder and let's go let's try Rise of Heroes we'll import that you can remember the more complicated you make these things the the longer and the larger the files are going to end up being okay so let's just do two songs for now so we have to go now we're going to go over here to add component we're going to type in tts which will take us to shortlist us to their c, uh, c sharp scripts so you want asset bundle effects and now you're going to want to have looping effects and trigger effects so looping effects is whatever the object is or the sound file it's going to play it and as soon as it ends it's just going to start playing it again i'm going to now go and click on size i only want let's put two files on here so we'll change that to two and that will change your element levels so now element one <clears throat> you're going to give it a name so let's call this the rise of heroes so every time I, you click on something it takes you off your hierarchy you got to go back over to here okay so name Rise of Heroes. Oops, caps lock is on. That works. Okay, so now normally this you have that. And now your sound clip, you're just gonna take your file and you're going to drag it up into there. Oh, I missed an E in there. Okay, 
And position 3D means that the sound is going to emanate from the cube. If you want the sound to be ambient around everybody at all times, you can uncheck that. But one caveat of that is that the sound volume cannot be altered. So if it is loud in game, then the players are going to not be able to change that and it will be loud. So it's probably safer to leave it position 3D. All right, so that's one. And that is it for that. So we close that. Element two, I'm going to put solitude from the, whoops, click sound, of course. Solitude from the Witcher. And we'll name that. Let's call it solitude. Okay, so we've now loaded two sound files that are going to loop onto this cube. So at this point now, all you do is you're going to grab this and you're going to drag it down into your assets and you want to original prefab. Now it needs to have a name. If you see it has nothing, so I click on this. I want a new name. We'll call it. And sometimes if you type, it doesn't type for some reason. You have to click it again and then say new name. And now it will. Bugs and everything. Sound cube test. Eh. I'll call it one. And once we have that in, we hit enter. Okay, so now this is named as sound cube test one. So now you're going to right click and you're going to build asset bundles. And now it's going to compile everything that's an asset bundle in your in your uh, asset section here. So there could, I could have other asset bundles already going. But basically it's uh, done now. So you're going to right click and you're going to show an explorer and you're going to look at your asset bundle file and sound cube test one. And I'm going to drag that down onto my desktop. And now, of course, from this point, you're going to take this and put it into your web hosting location. Like for me, it'd be Dropbox or whatever you're using. But for this case, I'm just going to leave it on the desktop and pull it strictly as a local file. All right, let's go into Tabletop Simulator. Okay, so here we are in Tabletop Simulator. I've dragged in uh, the soundboard that has a script on it, which you can find on my SoundCube uh, asset bundle in the workshop. Okay, so we're just gonna go to Objects, Components, Custom, and you wanna drag in an asset bundle, dropper on there, and that's going to ask you for this. In this case here, you would normally bring in your URL from your Dropbox or whatever thing you use. But in this, for me, I'm using, I'm going to use a local file. So test one right here. So I'm going to open that. And I just want to keep it local. Anyways, so you click import. Gives it a second. Now it's going to sit there for a bit. But you can now take your file. And here it's already auto playing. And you can just drop this cube right onto here and it will now give you your your options that you typed in so what we got now is a sound that's going to emanate from this cube and you can now click it so we got our cube and our sound comes from that and I can Switch it to solitude. One thing that I say I forgot is we're going to go back quickly and we're going to create a. So let's go back quickly into Unity. I made a mistake. It happens to the best of us. Size, let's change it to three. Now it's going to say looping effects, there's three. So now we have a two solitudes. We don't need two solitudes. So let's just go and turn this to stop. And we're going to the sound file. We're going to just delete that. Non-audio clip. Okay, so basically, and now you would just do the same thing. All right. So now we've got that fixed. We'll go back in, we'll delete this one. I'll reset this by importing it so it shows nothing. 
Okay, so in Tabletop Simulator, we're going to go Objects, Components, Custom, Asset Bundle. And I'm going to take my fixed one, which is going to be a local file for me, and open it. I'm going to keep it local as well. There's no point uploading this, but so we'll let that load. Drop it onto your thing. It's now going to give you a stop button. So now you can have your music with nothing. But when you want this to play what you want, you can now choose. You can add as many files as you want. It's just going to get more and more latent as the as the asset bundle becomes larger and larger. You're going to really start to challenge your players' uh, PCs to download as much information. So I would suggest keeping them within reason, depending on how big your sound clips are. But yeah, you should be able to choose your different sound sound files and, and be able to stop them. Hope that helps.